Hi there, and welcome to this edition of Inside Our Towns. My name is Evan Sanford, and I'm a contributor for the Our Towns Civic Foundation, and I'm the Executive Director at the Chamber of Commerce in Redlands, California. Today, our guests are with PA Humanities, which is an independent nonprofit and official state and federal partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities. The organization brings Pennsylvanians together to shape the future through the power of stories, reflections, and relationships. Their programs and grants put the humanities into action, generating avenues for civic involvement, community development, and personal growth. And now to my very impressive guest today, Lori Zier is an executive director at PA Humanities, where she's worked to strategically sharpen its focus on community building, education, advocacy, and research. During her tenure, she helped launch their three signature programs, which we'll touch on in just a moment. Dawn Frisbee Byers is their Senior Director of Content and Engagement. She's a marketing executive with extensive experience in brand development and management, strategic partnerships in both traditional and digital marketing. She recently led their rebranding and website redesign. And Jen Danifo is the organization's Senior Program Officer and a certified Level 2 Community Heart and Soul Coach. She works closely with grantees to provide technical support in all aspects of public engagement, program development, learning, and evaluation. We'll get to much more of what each of them are working on in their town later, but I'd like to welcome all of our guests to the program. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's start off with exactly what does the word humanities mean? in the 21st century. Lori, how about you? Um, humanities in the 21st century, you know, um, at PA Humanities, a lot of folks talk about what we do as applied humanities. It's um, uh, taking the tools of the humanities, the practices of the humanities for common good. Many times the humanities is defined as disciplines or content areas, um, and we easily, you know, you know, literature, philosophy, um, but we really think about uh, the humanities as taking the books off the shelves and putting them in people's hands to make changes in their community. How has the work changed over the course of, of you know, the decades that you all have been involved? What has been some of the biggest changes? Well, you know, um, at, at PA Humanities, uh, I think that we're really a great representative of a state humanities council across the nation. There's 56 of us in every state and territory, and we've been called an ongoing experiment. Uh, we're over 50 years old. Um, the endowments, the National Endowment for the Humanities and the Arts, um, they were created during the Johnson administration. And they were, um, uh, the aim was, um, and it's in the founding legislation, that democracy demands wisdom. Mm. Um, and for us at Humanities Councils, that has meant something different in every state and territory. And Pennsylvania, it means something that it, that it means in California, where you are, um, or in Vermont, uh, where the uh, community Heart and Soul was um, originally founded. <clears throat> and uh, um, that's an important part of uh, the work um, that we're a nonprofit that responds to needs um, within the state. And for us, Big needs have been around education, particularly youth education, as well as in civic engagement, in particular, engaging people across party lines um, uh, to do um, and to do things um, together within their communities. I talk a lot about um, uh, PA Humanities as us finding our own identity in the state. And uh, in during the economic downturn, um, uh, we were faced with uh, a fiscal crisis for us um, and how we were going to sustain ourselves. Uh, we had lost some uh, funds from the National Endowment for the Humanities. We also um, lost all state funding. We've never um, had, uh, we've never been a line item in the uh, Pennsylvania state budget, but we worked um, through partnerships with state agencies and they had their budget slashed. So we really had to think about what was our relevance um, in Pennsylvania? And we looked around and at colleges and universities, students were asking themselves, do I even want a liberal arts degree? What is that going to um, do for me in the marketplace? There was a, there was a real crisis in the humanities. And, and we said, nah, wait a minute, there is a real need. 
um, and really took a look um, at where we could make that difference um, with youth, youth education and civic engagement. Um, um, so I think that makes the big difference. Um, and the way that we um, uh, um, really uh, took our programs. Um, and so with that start, we started to ask with the people of Pennsylvania, what was youth education gonna look like and what difference could it make? And we worked hand in hand with libraries and with young people to see what the kind of impact um, uh, that our programs could have. And the, the kind of impact was taking books and um, uh, identifying issues within the community to make a change. Um, or um, with a program like Heart and Soul, um, to <clears throat> use stories um, in order to uh, um, identify uh, the values within a community and problem solve what that future would look like. Dawn, let's talk about that and maybe Jen, you can follow up after that. How, how has your work been impacted by the pandemic? And also how have you been working to do what Lori was just talking about and bring humanities into the current light and the current times uh, and address those kinds of, of things? The results of the pandemic, uh, notwithstanding the real reason for the pandemic, the health issues, but the pandemic offered an opportunity for us as a statewide organization to actually reach more people across the state. Up until then, our programs were primarily on the ground, one-on-one, -on -one, deep work, individual, look someone directly in the eye. But, we, but when that opportunity was taken away from us, we were able to take some of our learnings and some of, and work with our partners to share information and uh, create online programs. We were very quick uh, uh, to do that. And in, in that, and which allowed us to reach more Pennsylvanians, but more important, for our message to get across to organizations who now look at us in a different light. So I think we picked up uh, some more fans mm -hmm. and we were able to illustrate how the, what the humanities can do and should be doing uh, across various sectors, not just libraries or just community groups, but throughout the state throughout the cultural sector of, of Pennsylvania. Jen, do you wanna add? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Dawn's right. We probably have been more connected to some of our, Pennsylvania is a big state. Um, it takes, you know, what, seven, six, seven hours to get for, actually more than that, to get from one end to the other. So, you know, for a staff of 12, it is not always easy for us to go out and visit with people. The pandemic, of course, basically, you know, blew that up. We weren't able to really go out, you know, no one was. So we had to pivot. And so I would say in some ways it actually, um, I know because I work with the heart and soul communities, there are 10 um, right now that are currently running the program. Three, of course, have kind of graduated on to like being done with the, the actual process, but are still heart and soul communities. You know, I felt like I've gotten to know these people because we've had like weekly um, Zoom calls and, you know, people were just concerned. They were like, what do we do? Um, and I also think like with our great, so, you know, there's a lot of talking about that. Like, how do we do our work? Do we pause? I mean, a lot of people pause because they had to, you know, take care of personal, you know, issues. A lot of people, you know, it was just, it was just a little nutty at that time. But I will say the other thing too, we have um, our SHARP grants, the um, uh, Sustaining the Humanities through the American Rescue Plan Act. We got some money through the federal government, through the NEH in order to help um, organizations, you know, um, recover and grow, you know, uh, you know, from the impact of the pandemic and kind of recover from that and continue to grow. And it allowed us, I think, the pandemic in some ways asked us to slow down and listen to what they actually needed. Um, we do programming and grant making and grant making can be this thing where you sometimes ask uh, folks to like jump through hoops in order to get the money that they're requesting. And I think for us, we really saw it as an opportunity we needed to slow down and listen to them and what they needed. Um, and in that way, we were able to kind of model the idea of the humanities, which is like, let's just not talk about the work, but talk about like what's going on in your community. And so I think that was really valuable as well. And it's something that even though like the pandemic kind of necessitated it, it's something that we're trying to weave into everything we do now. It's like, how do we understand the context of what people are working in and how the humanities actually 
um, supports that context. And Evan, you know, I just want, I want to amplify a point about the humanities. When we started on this journey to really think about you know, what impact the humanities could have in a community, we were learning with folks. Mm -hmm. And we were told as we went that these are really important tools. I never realized this, this would be um, so important to talk about race in my community. And right now, there is a realization in a different way that you know, times are very complex. They've always been complex, but people are seeing it um, more than ever before. And how do I embrace this complexity? And that there are difference of uh, opinions and perspectives and life experiences. How do we bring that all into the room and find what we can work together on with shared problem solving, that is the humanities. Mm. And folks are embracing the complexity <laughs> because it's not a simple narrative when you get into a community about um, yeah. you know, holding on to the past. And it used to be, oh, uh, folks are um, holding on to the past. They're looking to something that's new. It's more complex than that. And we've got to lean into the whole story and figure out what we can um, uh, all chew on together and share and problem solve around. Yeah, yeah, and I would say too that, you know, I think that's a great point, Laurie. And I think that what we're hearing from all of our communities is that this building this muscle of being able to discuss the context and the complexity is something that I wouldn't say is lost, but is not always practiced, right? You know, if you think about the traditional humanities or the traditional way sometimes the humanities are employed, it's, you know, thinking about, dates and people and like all that's important but I think the idea of like being able to I just, someone just I heard someone talk it was his historian and he said you know history doesn't necessarily repeat itself because the context around the history is different so each time something happens even if it seems similar like wars happen but the context around the war is always there's something different right although there are patterns that you can kind of deduce from you know the past. And I think that that with our heart and soul programs, with our Chester Made program, with our teen reading lounge program, even with our grantees, the re relief and recovery programs, we're hoping that people have the opportunity to dig into that complexity because Laurie's right. I mean, the time is right for folks to be able to practice that muscle. It is not easy. <laughs> Um, but, you know, every time we, we hear from our, especially our heart and soul communities, thank you so much for giving us these tools, um, because we would never have really talked about this had we not done heart and soul. Same thing with Teen Reading Lounge. We hear that from libraries all the time. Teens would never be able to talk about their identity in this way in a school setting, or at least it may not be as open. Um, so that's really, really important, I think. And one way we're trying to go into the 21st century and make it a little more modern and applicable. So, Jen, you mentioned community heart and soul. And listeners might remember that a previous guest in Iowa was a coach with Community Heart and Soul. And so I'd like to hear a little bit more about how that program is working in Pennsylvania and what you're doing with the foundation itself. Sure, sure. So I will say, you know, we started this journey, I think it was what, 2015, Laurie, 2016, right? So it's been quite a, quite a journey. We started with three communities. Um, we, we, you know, like Laurie said, we decided that civic engagement was an area that we, as a humanities council, wanted to lean into and explore. Um, and so we, you know, discovered uh, Community Heart and Soul, then they were called the Orton Family Foundation. And we reached out to them and we said, you know, storytelling is really a big part part of the human, like we see the humanities in this process. Is there a way that we might be able to work together and see if we can bring this to, to Pennsylvania? For example, you'll hear stories about how people really love the downtown because of all the recreation and where maybe back in the day, there were a lot of local businesses and they want that to come back. So what does that tell us about what a community cares about or what the history of a community was and then how we can maybe move forward and build on that? Um, so it's a really, really amazing process. And, you know, we work very closely with communities um, and really walk them through that process. Their life experience becomes the text. You know, sometimes in the humanities, you think about like a text that you were exploring, their actual experience and stories become that text that they are, you know, kind of unpacking together and discussing together. And that um, creates a basis for a community action plan that goes beyond us. And, you know, will take them years and years, sometimes decades to implement. Don, I'd like to ask you some something about, how, how is this organization able to do the kinds of things that you're all 
do, this does not seem like something that at least the three of you can accomplish on your own. What kind of partnerships do you have and have you had over the course of so many years to ensure that you can actually accomplish all these amazing things that you're doing? Well, we are super women, so we can start there. <laughs> We're just not wearing our capes today. Um, that um, what but, was confusing me. <laughs> but no, it is a great question. The, 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 this type of work can only exist when we have on the ground partners, no matter what, what, what type of work we're doing, we seek on the ground partners. One, staff is small. And two, the, the, our, our philosophy of working in communities means working with people who know the communities. The last thing we would do is come into a community and say, we're the Humanities Council and we're here to help you. It's, you know, we don't know what's happening on the ground. So part of the discovery is what's really going on here, good, bad, and, you know, and anything in between. And in, in order to be authentic in that work, you have to work with people who are trusted partners, who can help you navigate uh, uh, around certain certain situations, and also who are who were there who were there before you came and will be there after we leave. So, so our partnerships and our success is based a lot on who we work with on the ground, and and that they believe in what we're doing, you know, and, and can help or at least. Um, help in the sense of help bring people together for for their own good. Because we are one of our philosophies is people one are not problems to be solved. People come to people have assets. Everybody has has assets and has something to contribute. Uh, we think people sometimes ask the wrong questions. So if you ask, if you come in and ask, invite people to share their stories that's when you really can get information and uh, agreement and uh, a new light and a new path will be, will be revealed. You know, when we started this work, I remember way back when um, it, we uh, embarked on a project that came to be known as Chester Made. It was named by the community. Um, when it first started, it was called the Downtown Chester Corridor Project. Mm. Um, and we were invited in by the city of Chester um, and local Widener University um, to do some civic engagement kind of thing. They needed some town halls because they wanted to do, um, uh, they had a grand idea um, to connect the downtown with the university and it was gonna be an economic driver. And they knew that arts and culture had to be part of it. So couldn't the PA Humanities come in, have a couple town halls, figure out what the community really wanted with arts and culture. We said, well, you know, we're gonna have to do this a little bit differently. We're gonna have to work with the community. And uh, we all got together and Widener University put us all on a bus. Um, uh, and you could walk from Widener University um, to the downtown, but they put us on a bus to take us downtown. Uh, and there were some community members on the bus and we got very close to the downtown and community members um, turned to us, uh, I'll remember this um, uh, distinctly, uh, and an artist said, I really think we should stop and get off the bus. And that's the key, you gotta stop and get off the bus. Um, to really engage with people. Um, uh, and we started to go into downtown stores. Uh, and I met an artist, Devin Walls, who was sitting in the back looking, who the heck has come into town um, to look at us um, like we're a problem to be solved. Um, and we've been working behind the scenes here for a long time. And that's when the conversation started because that's an invitation for everyone to um, uh, um, engage and uh, sort out um, uh, what, the, what we wanna work on together um, and move it forward. It's getting off the bus. In our previous conversation, getting ready for today, we, we had talked about how you're using mapping technologies to interact with other organizations that may not actually consider themselves to be humanities organizations 
talk to us a little bit more about what that looks like. Sure. And it, uh, to be clear, it's more of a mapping project. It's not so much technology. We're not, um, we're not that savvy. But when, what we are There's doing- There's women. Don't underestimate. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. I forgot. Put my cake back on. Um, what, what, we, um, what we've learned as we go throughout the state and speak with people, and particularly through our grant making efforts over the last two or three years, is that when you say, are you a humanities organization, people say no. But then when you read what they do, you're like, yeah, you know, you are, <laughs> or you're using humanities practice, mm -hmm. right? So we are doing a project in conjunction with Drexel University out of Philadelphia, their arts administration um, department, to identify organizations throughout the state who are using tools humanity tools like storytelling and sharing and reflection and conversations are, who are using these tools within their communities for, for sharing, for community involvement, for community growth. And even though they don't call it the humanities, we actually are calling the thing, we don't call it the humanities. So we are, we are looking at developing uh, a network of organizations who do this work and have been doing it for years um, so that we can illustrate again how important this work is and how, how it in the impact of this type of approach to work and to life uh, so that we're not the only ones carrying that banner. Speaking of banners, that was actually a great transition. Uh, Lori and Don, maybe you can also uh, touch on this. Next year is going to be a banner year for you. It's a big anniversary. So tell us what's in store. What's what's on tap for next year? Well, it is our 50th anniversary is in 2023. And we have several um, things lined up. One is uh, a bunch of research that we've done on these topics, one for Team Meeting Lounge, one in Community Heart and Soul, and several on this connections of other humanity-like groups. We will uh, be pushing those out and probably do some programs around that. We have an idea to uh, do a tour around the state where we will be um, very visible, hopefully with you know COVID never never ending and never and always changing. But the idea <laughs> is to take the PA Humanities on the tour and uh, stop in a, a lot of places and and show the power of storytelling and conversation by gathering people who are not like minded on the paper, but we all agree that people are more alike than they are different mm -hmm. and exercising and facilitating conversations like that. And then we have, um, we also will have uh, a project that will illustrate the conversations and the works of Pennsylvania playwrights, particularly August Wilson and his reflections of life in Pennsylvania in the 20th century. And we'll use that to spark community conversation and dialogue as well. You know, um, I, I love the way that David White, po uh, he, he puts it, you know, every conversation um, is an invitation. And uh, our 50th uh, year anniversary, there's gonna be a lot of conversations and um, uh, really invitations um, to engage with the humanities. Uh, and to um, uh, you know, bring people together uh, across what many people think are divides. Um, uh, we don't see as many divides. We see a lot of commonalities. We see um, individual perspectives um, uh, and uh, um, opportunities to bring people together to talk about what those differences are um, and how we can share um, to um, problem solve and work um, together on the future. How can people find out a little bit more about PA Humanities? Well, we have a brand new website, 
pahumanities.org, mm -hmm. where our work is featured. Uh, there's also links to uh, stories that we uh, collect from our grantees and also uh, our program partners. We actually employ a part-time storyteller who writes the stories for our, for our website. And also on the website are ways for people to get involved and to join us. Well, I thank you all for joining us. All three super women. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here with us today. And for all of you that are joining us at home, thank you for listening to this edition of Inside Our Towns.